so in this uh, module we'll be learning about the advances in concrete technology this is a short module relatively now the first is uh, fiber reinforced concrete okay so wh why fiber reinforced concrete is required and what exactly is fiber reinforced concrete that we will understand so you can already see in this image that there are some fibers uh, that are embedded into the concrete so why does a concrete require them first is that a plain concrete will not have much tensile strength ductility and crack resistance we all know that the plain concrete is very weak in tension and uh, for that we have to supplement it with a reinforced uh, a reinforcement or steel something that can take tension reinforcing the concrete by steel imparts tensile strength to rcc but it will not improve the inherent tension capacity of concrete isn't it the reinforcement will act along with the concrete and it will act as a unit but it is not going to improve the tension or the tensile strength of your concrete uh, or your cement plain concrete itself that is the inherent capacity or inherent property of the concrete which the reinforcement cannot improve so in this case uh, due to this fact the various internal defects are formed in concrete even before the load is applied the concrete forms micro cracks because of various reasons like shrinkage temperature variations etc so there are a lot of reasons for those micro cracks being formed and the concrete will essentially crack because of the tension tensile forces or tensile stresses so these shrinkage and then temperature variations etc they uh, they create a lot of tensile stresses within the body of the concrete and because of them a lot of micro cracks are created inside so what if our concrete was able to resist those tensile forces wouldn't that be great if our concrete can resist the tensile forces so that is basically uh, done using fibers so when we include the fibers in concrete it improves the inherent tensile strength and then arrests these cracks formed so these fibers will improve the inherent tensile strength of the concrete okay now what types of fibers are used first very simple type is steel fibers so these as you can see these are your steel fibers steel fiber is one of the most commonly used fiber generally they are round fibers round in the cross section the diameter may vary from 0.25 to 0.75 mm the steel fiber is likely to get rusted and lose some of its strength but it is also seen that the steel fiber only gets rusted from the outside the inside of that fiber remains good use of steel fiber makes significant improvements in flexural impact and fatigue strength of concrete fatigue strength is uh, basically if your concrete is subjected to a lot of cycles of loading and unloading then it it is seen that uh, after a certain amount of loading and unloading your concrete starts to uh, starts to develop stress inside and it starts to lose its strength so it is it is almost like synonymous to when we when we buy a charger or when we get a charger with our mobile that charger has a capacity that uh, it says that it can charge for these many number of cycles like for let's say 20000 number of cycles or certain number of cycles is given with it so what does that mean that your charger will work efficiently for those many number of cycles after that it may lose some of its efficiency same is with concrete it will have it will work efficiently for a number of cycles of loading and unloading after that it will lose some of its efficiency thin shells and plates have also been constructed using steel fibers second type of fiber is polypropylene and nylon fibers so they possess very high tensile strength but their low modulus of elasticity and higher elongation do not contribute to the flexural strength so these you see here these are polypropylene and nylon fibers now these are very good in tension but then a question arises that if they are so good in tension why don't we use them uh, as a, a reinforcement why why do we use steel 
So the answer is that although they are good in tension, but they are not good in flexural strength. That is in the bending and in the elongation, they are not good. So that is why the, they cannot be replaced steel. Even if you know that then the spider silk, that is the web that the spider uh, does, that silk that is called a spider silk. So that spider silk is several times tougher or it has several times more tensile strength than steel but for obvious reasons we cannot use it into our concrete because it definitely won't give you a good flexural resistance and that is why steel is not replaced by any other uh, in at least in general concreting steel is not replaced by any other materials Third is asbestos. So asbestos is a natural mineral and it's a fibrous mineral. You can see here. It can also be used in concreting. But of later studies, it is found that asbestos is toxic in nature and therefore in certain countries, the asbestos is banned in using. So it's a mineral fiber and has been pro proved to be most successful of all fibers as it can be mixed with Portland cement. Tensile strength of asbestos varies between 560 to 980 megapascal. You can see how much more it is as compared to steel. The steel that we have been learning till now is the maximum was 500 megapascals. And there are certain uh, steels which are 550 megapascal. But you can see this tensile strength, how much more it is. The composite product called asbestos cement has considerably higher flexural strength than the Portland cement paste. For unimportant fiber concrete, organic fibers like coir, jute, cane spreads are used, are also used. So coir is the one that is produced uh, by coconut, that coconut husk we call it or coconut hair that is called as coir. Jute we all know, cane splits are the sugar, sugar cane splits. So they, those are also fibrous. So for certain unimportant concreting, we can use those as a substitute for fibers. Asbestos is illegal in certain parts of the world due to health issues arising from it as what I already told you. Next we have glass fiber. So these are uh, some recent uh, development glass fiber. Glass fiber is a recent introduction in making fiber concrete. It has a very high tensile strength. You can see how much high it is. 1020 to 480 Newton per mm square. That's too high. Glass fiber which is originally used in conjunction with cement was found to be affected by alkaline conditions of cement. Therefore, alkali resistant glass fiber by trade name Semfil has been developed and used. So the, the environment under, in the body of the concrete is alkaline that is basic in nature and it was seen that these glass fibers do not uh, stay properly in that alkaline nature therefore a new alkali resistant glass was formed. The alkali resistant fiber reinforced concrete shows considerable improvement in durability when compared to the conventional e-glass fiber. Next are carbon fibers. These are also of a very high strength and uh, they are used in a lot of a lot of uh, aerodynamic uh, things and even in the aero modeling they are used carbon fibers because they are particularly very light in weight and very high in strength. Uh, these are some modern things. Uh, if you uh, know then certain Rolls Royce are also made using carbon fibers and certain very uh, luxurious cars are also made using carbon fibers yeah so carbon fibers perhaps possesses very high tensile strength around 2110 to 2815 newton per mm square that is almost uh, like five to six times more than steel it has been reported that cement composites made with carbon fibers as a reinforcement will have very high modulus of elasticity and flexural strength. In fact, this was one of my uh, uh, bachelor's, bachelor's degree project in which we used carbon fiber. It was uh, obviously a 
sponsored project because the carbon fiber is very expensive it is around like 5000 to 6000 rupees for 1 meter square uh, but uh, it was a sponsored project and we used carbon fiber and you won't believe that a m20 concrete we could uh, make it uh, to uh, sustain a load of 80 megapascal so m20 could be done into m80 concrete so that that is the strength of this carbon fiber but it is very expensive as i already told you the next is polymer concrete now this is one more advancement in the concrete technology and why polymer concrete is first of all uh, what was the need of developing a polymer concrete the main issue with most of the regular concrete is the porous nature of concrete and it has been time and again said that due to the porous nature of concrete the durability is hampered because a lot of uh, things get its way inside the concrete and then it can attack your steel and attack the concrete itself so if the if those pores are fixed then the durability issue will be fixed right so those pores are uh, they can be because of the voids or because of the water or inherent void of gel structure to improve the permeability of concrete polymer concrete was developed so what we actually do in polymer concrete is we fill those pores with something called as polymer and uh, it is seen that if after filling those pores the concrete attains a lot of high strength so th you can see in this image how the pores how it almost has a very negligible amount of pores so they are filled using polymer the main idea is to use polymer chemistry for filling up the voids and making concrete more durable and strong so what exactly do we use to fill the concrete let us see that so there are types of different polymer concrete first type is polymer impregnated concrete PIC so this type as the name suggests impregnated it means that the polymer is diffused inside of the concrete such that it fills all the words so in this case a precast concrete is cured and dried in oven later the air in the voids are removed by vacuum so we remove all the air from the body of the concrete and then that air is substituted by this polymer so what exactly we do is that there is a monomer a liquid monomer is there we submerge our concrete into that liquid monomer so that the liquid monomer goes deep into the concrete crevices and all the voids and then we subject it to certain chemical uh, chemistry uh, reactions such that that polymerization of that monomer happens and the monomer turns into a polymer so polymerization of monomer is done using radiation heat or chemical initiation the monomers that, that, that are used are different types of monomers are first is methyl methacrylate this is the one then uh, we have styrene acrylonitrile and t butyl styrene etc so these are some monomers that we can use for polymer impregnated concrete which later we can turn them into polymers second we have polymer cement concrete pcc so uh, this should not be uh, confused with plain cement concrete this is not that it is polymer cement concrete so polymer cement concrete is made by mixing cement aggregates water and monomer in the previous case what we did was uh, already cast concrete was dipped into the liquid monomer and then polymerization was done here what we are doing is that during mixing of the concrete itself we are introducing it with the monomer right these are cast cured dried and polymerized but it is generally seen that uh, introducing monomer this way is not a good idea although this type of concrete is still under development uh, as it is not showing promising results this is because the monomer uh, are not compatible with the aqueous environment of the concrete and they cause hindrance in the hydration process so if the hydration itself does not happen then how will the concrete gain strength so if these monomers are causing hindrance that means your you will get strength even lesser than your normal concrete that is what is happening with these kind of polymer concretes but 
in russia it is seen that uh, they have developed certain polymer cement concrete which is showing a promising result epoxy resin also has good results third type of polymer concrete is partially impregnated and surface coated concrete so as the name suggests it's partially impregnated so we partially fill the voids and uh, partially impregnated concrete could be produced by initially soaking the dried specimens in liquid monomer like methyl methacrylate then sealing them by keeping them under hot water at 70 degrees to prevent or minimize loss due to evaporation the polymerization can be done by using thermal catalytic method in which 3% by weight of benzoyl peroxide is added to the monomer as a catalyst so this is the reaction that they are explaining so that the monomer is turned into a polymer the potential application of polymer impregnated concrete is surface treatment uh, is in improving the durability of concrete bridge decks bridge deck deterioration is a serious problem everywhere particularly due to abrasive water freeze thaw deterioration spalling and corrosion of reinforcement so actually the idea of this concrete is to just coat it surf on the surface uh, such that the voids are filled on the surface and not throughout the body of the concrete so this is just partially impregnating the concrete from the surface such that nothing enters into the concrete from outside and this is in simplicity what we can say about it so this was it for today's lecture in the next lecture we will be learning more about advances in concrete technology till then take care thank you